The seven secrets of healthy weight loss is really simple. All it is is getting the facts and figures based on scientific studies and more than 40 years of being out there and working with the public through science. Now, it's really important that when you judge someone, you're going to look at them and say, well, do they have that experience? Because all too often I see on the social media some 25-year-old person with ripped abs saying, this is what you need to do. And let me tell you what, it's not. There is so much misinformation and disinformation and this is what creates the existing problem at the moment because everybody goes through stages of when they want to lose weight or not and if you don't have the right information you make mistakes so hang in there stay tuned because i'm going to sum it up i'm going to sum up years and years of research and thousands of studies that i've looked at into what you can walk away with and say okay here are some steps that i can take simple steps and it's the seven secrets and the first thing I want to make sure you're very clear of, it's not in the genes. It's in the genes. In other words, a lot of people say, oh, I put on weight because, oh, it's genetic and my dad and my mum and my brother and my uncle and my dog and cat. Are, well, guess what? Exactly. There is very little obesity linked with the genes. And even if you've got all the genes for obesity, in the vast majority of cases, you still have to eat the wrong foods and do the wrong things to put on the weight. And I'm gonna share with you what you can do. The first and simplest rule is don't count calories, count nutrition. Don't count calories, stop counting calories. Counting calories, first of all, from a mental perspective, makes you focus on what you can't have and what you don't have. And you go into one of these uh, takeaway stores and you go, oh, you know, a, a, a big, food chain and it's got all the calories in there and nobody really knows what it wants. There's 20 or 30 percent leeway on every single one of those. So it's out. The calculations of it are not just complex, they're actually wrong. So that's the first part about it. The second one is that by calorie restricting, you're assuming that you're going to get all of the nutrients and in most cases you don't. And let me tell you, I'll preempt it, that your body needs nutrients, not the extra calories and the extra numbers that they're telling you about. It needs nutrition to actually feel satiated, satisfied that it's got the right type of food. So coming back to the calories, I'll give you some simple examples. First of all, all of the studies on calorie counting show they can work for a short time. And I've had a couple of people argue with me, oh, it works, it works. And then guess what? Six months later, every single one of those people have put on weight again. Calorie counting is great for seesawing. Go up and down and every time you put on, you get it, you put on more weight. What happens when you lose weight rapidly in these calorie counting things is you lose a lot of muscle mass. And when you put it back on, you put it back on as fat. Exactly what you don't want. You want the muscle mass to stay there to even build up a little bit because that's your metabolic motor behind it. Don't count calories. So the science shows it doesn't work. Second, of, yeah, it works in the short time, in the short term, when you've got someone coaching you and when you've got someone doing that, when, when you stop that, you put weight back on. So coming to the second one, I can give you certain foods. For example, I can give you 100 grams of, uh, 100 or 150 calories of uh, almonds and 150 calories of white foods, white processed foods, and that one will put on weight and that one won't. That will actually help you lose weight. What? I can give you certain oils, for example, uh, extra virgin olive oil, and you have one cup of that a day, and you have another cup of uh, highly processed vegetable oils, you put on weight with this one and not with that one, despite the fact that they're identical calorie-wise. Then here it is, you ready? You know all those artificial sweeteners, the things that are really, really bad for you, Everyone tells you, eat them, have them, you know, they'll yeah, get, the, get the soft drinks with the artificial sweetness and it's got no calories. Well, they actually put on more weight. And how they do it isn't because of the calories, but because they send messengers, they disturb the gut microbiome, I'll talk about that later, and they, they actually send messages to the body to continue to eat, slow the metabolism down, and, and they actually poison aspects of your ability to lose weight. Wow. And these don't have any calories at all. So do you get the picture in here? Now I can use the same thing with toxins too, by the way. If you're exposed to pesticides, then you're more likely to put on weight, even though there's no calories involved. So forget the calorie counting. What you want to do is count nutrition. And when it comes to nutrition, the most nutritiously dense 
foods you can eat. They may have lots of calories in them, but the more of you eat of them, the more weight you lose and you stop putting on weight. And the first issue with weight loss is actually to stop putting on weight, correct? Yeah, so you stop putting on weight. So eat nutritious foods. Focus on rather like, oh, how many calories have you got? Say, what nutrition have you got in you? Look at it. And if it's got sugar added and it's got all these other things, but no calories, it's still junk food. So the single best process you can do from an understanding perspective is go on a Mediterranean diet. Now that's not pasta. Okay, you'll understand some of the details later. It's lots of the veggies, the nuts, the beans, and all those other bits and pieces, which are nutrient dense. You get the idea? It all comes down to nutrition. Count the nutrition, not the calories. And the first thing you will find is you will have more energy. You'll be able to actually do more things. Your, your body will respond to you over a week or two and say, wow, what's all this extra nutrition? Because all you've got to do is look at the societies who eat nutrient-dense foods. They also, by the way, happen to be the ones who live longer. And you look at the societies, the Western societies, who eat processed foods and count calories, just focus on calories, and they're the sickest and the heaviest, the most obese. And it all comes back to counting calories instead of counting nutrients. The second one, cut the processed carbs and foods. And everybody's told you that one. But anything that looks like it's been processed, e.g. even spaghetti, even your breads, even all those foods, they have been processed. And what happens in your digestive system, you've got all these little receptors all the way along. And they measure and record all of the various things, everything from your uh, pH to fat content, to different types of fat, to um, nutrients, and all of these things, and they're measuring them. They're going, okay, that's really good. Let's digest them. Again. And, oh, I feel full because I've got all the nutrition. So they measure a whole raft of things, dozens, maybe even hundreds of different types of receptors, recording and sending messages back up to your brain to say, I'm full, I'm full. Whereas processed foods, particularly processed carbs, you can eat as much as you want. You can keep eating and eating, and it doesn't register that you're full until your belly is actually bloated and out there. And that will probably happen in terms of being uh, bloated with a belly because they contribute to all of the gut illnesses as well. So what we're going to do is cut out the processed carbs. And again, it goes back to the Mediterranean diet. Cut out the processed foods. Okay, doesn't mean you can't splurge. It doesn't mean you can't have a treat. But for the vast majority of your meals, eat healthily. The same process and principle as this first one here. Now, the third one is the gut rules. You're highly unlikely, and I'm not talking about your belly around here, I'm talking about your gut, your intestines, your digestion and your large intestine, which has got all those microbiome in there, the microbiota, the microorganisms. And the reality is, if that's not working for you, it's working to put weight on. It, it, just in your microbiome alone, there are something like 30 different messenger chemicals that are sent around the body, hormones or hormone-like chemicals that are sent around the body to determine how well you feel, how good you feel, uh, how hungry you are, how hungry you're not. If you want to eat, if you, all of these things are largely determined by the chemicals and so on in your gut. So your gut rules. It also sends messages to your brain called the gut brain axis and tells you that, you know, hey, I've eaten enough, I've not eaten enough. And all of this stuff coordinates up and down. So the 30 chemicals, as well as all the other messages going around your body saying, I'm full. And it does that when it gets the right type of nutrition. And the right type of nutrition is nutrients, not carbs. Because carbs, the processed carbs, the processed white bread, the processed white flours, the processed pastas, the processed rice even, they all, to a degree, poison the gut. And that's the last thing you want. You want a healthy gut, a healthy microbiome. Because again, I'll say a healthy gut determines how long you're going to live and as well as that, how much of these diseases you're going to avoid out there. Please watch my other YouTubes on all the issues related to gut. And to do that, hit the button below and subscribe, please, because we can then get this message out to a lot of people. I, I am sick and tired of watching all of these people telling them how to lose weight. I even know people 
on the social media who are saying, this is how I lost weight. And they have forgotten to tell you they actually had an operation. To, yet they had an operation to help remove some of the fat. So my message is that do it my way because it's the safest, healthiest way possible. It's tried and tested. And in fact, it's been used for thousands of years until now. So with gut rules. So with gut rules, anything that is going to benefit gut health. So even taking probiotics is associated with improved gut. But there are a couple of foods, polyphenols, and these are the things you get in all your veggies, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices, actually send messages in via your gut to help lose weight. And that leads me then onto this one, more fiber. The fourth one, more fiber. Fiber is the one of the foods that is associated with feeling fuller, faster. And it's not just because it makes you feel bloated. It's actually because when it goes into your microbiome, in your large intestine, it starts to produce chemicals that go around your body and send all these messages back up to your brain to say, I'm full. So there's a whole heap of these messengers that can be influenced by what you eat, and in particular, fiber. So the fiber is a great messenger. And my favorite one, obviously, I talk about many, many times, is K-fiber. And it's got a mix of polyphenols and fiber and a whole raft of things that help with gut problems. But also, again, it's the perfect fiber for just feeling satiated and yes, I'm full. So add some fiber. Now on the top, on the idea of feeling full when you eat, the next one is protein. Increasing your protein intake. Now if you're a vegetarian, you stick to increasing vegetarian proteins. Okay, the, the, um, the things like you know, the nuts and the seeds which are richer in them and concentrated, fantastic. If you're not a vegetarian, great as well. My only issue about non-vegetarian sources, e.g. meat, is avoiding big pieces of steak that are cooked and overcooked because they are almost impossible to digest. And as a result of that, you end up with the gut rules again. So you have to make sure the foods, the proteins you eat. Now, why are proteins important? The first of all is that they send messages straight away. So if you've got one called leucine, L-U-C-I-N-E, it's an amino acid. And it's released from a lot of the protein-based foods. And it sends messages that you're full and that you can increase metabolism. Now, there are lots of little messengers like that as a result of protein. See, in fact, most of the messengers around your body are protein breakdown products. Amino acids making into proteins, um, the neurotransmitters. They all go around the body and they all involve having some amino acids or some protein breakdown products in it. So we need those for all the messages in the body. Even the ones that make us feel happy and well and we sleep well and so on come from proteins. But first, you ready? They have to be digested in the stomach and into the digestive tract by having a gut rules. Gut comes back to it. Without a healthy gut, the digestion doesn't occur and you don't get all those chemical messages saying, well, wow, you know, you've had enough, don't eat any more, increase your metabolism. All these messages go on constantly from the, the gut and they rely on the fiber and these amino acids, the proteins. They, they rely on lots and lots of good foods out there. So the more fiber you can eat. If you're gonna have a treat, okay, you want a little treat in there, first of all, check out. If it's got a high, if it's got any added sugar, don't have it. But if it's got uh, nuts and cacao, and there's some great nut bars out there, and they have all these things, and check out the fiber content, 12% fiber. That's a nice little snack you can have when you're hungry. Don't count the calories, count the nutrients. I always, and when I'm going out, I'm feeling a little bit hungry, all I do is head to the nut drawer that we've got and take a selection of the nuts and seeds, put them in my mouth, and I tell you, I don't put on weight no matter how much I eat. So we come back to here, protein. Good eating habits. So we've got the food one under control. You remember I've mentioned, mentioned all of the uh, herbs and spices. Uh, they all send messages around your body about eating healthily and you've eaten and you don't want to put on weight and improve energy and improve your health and your well-being. Uh, they get rid of that sluggishness. They can help with brain fog. All of those things are positive consequences of eating this type of way. Whereas if you're going on a calorie counting, you go, oh, geez, I'm so tired. I'm exhausted. I can't do anything. I can't work. I can't focus. Get in, on, in touch with what I'm doing here. 
And then we get into good eating habits. It's really simple. Eat smaller meals and spread them over a smaller period. So the first thing you don't want to do is overeat. Overeating is the one that fools the body about how much you can eat. So if you eat really, really quickly, a huge meal, you can gobble that down and you won't feel satisfied. You won't feel full. You will still feel hungry. So what you want to do is go slow. Between every single bite, put the knife and fork down, put the hand down, take a breath. Become conscious with the food. And the slower you take to eat the meal, the less you eat because your body is receiving the messages. There's a delay period in taking food in and your body responding saying, okay, don't eat anymore, don't eat anymore. So the slower you take to eat, the more breaths you take in between, the better the digestion, the less likely you're gonna have gut complications and gut issues and reflux and all of those things. And then on, on top of that, it sends the messages down. So eat uh, slower, eat less hours. Try to do a little bit of fasting. I'm not really talking about fasting. Fasting is brilliant. There's a lot of research on the benefits of fasting. And I tell people who don't do it, just do the 12-12 to start. 12 hours of an eating window and 12 hours of not eating. But eating in between, eating at nighttime puts on weight. Eating first thing in the morning puts on weight. Doing all these things put on weight. So what you wanna do is make sure that you eat in that window. Now, if you can get that window down to six hours, even better. You can still consume the calories in those six hours. You can still consume all of the nutrients and you actually find your body gets into a routine where it feels very, very comfortable with that window of eating just six or eight hours. And when you do that, your body starts to clear up all of the dead cells, the senescent cells in something called autophagy. It clears them out, it's like a rubbish truck going through and getting rid of all those. It starts to reinvigorate you. You will actually end up with more energy and more than anything, your brain will be focused and clear and you will end up with an ability to focus exactly on what you're doing. Regaining your weight, the right weight that you want to be so that you can be healthy and have all those, the energy and things to do, all the things you want to do. So eat less hours. And the final part of this is walk and relax more. There is no doubt that stress is a big player. In some rare cases, people who stress lose weight. But in the majority of cases, the stress that people put them through, the emotional stress, the financial stress, the relationship stress, we are brainwashed into actually thinking we need stress. We don't, we don't. I hear people, oh, I manage my stress here by eating, by overeating, by eating the wrong foods, by eating all the packet stuff and so on. No, we need to actually stop all this extra stress in our lives, calm our minds down, find some things like meditation. Again, just breathing. If you just stop now and take a deep breath, instantly, instantly, it starts to calm your nervous system down. It moves your nervous system from what's called the sympathetic or the stress nervous system into the parasympathetic nervous system, the calming nervous system. Do that a few times. It's also great for your digestion, by the way. It actually exercises the muscles around your digestive tract, which helps move things through properly as well. And of course, it helps with all the messages around the body. So take your time, learn to de-stress, learn not to stress, change your mindset about things. And there's a lot of work on that. Of course, I've got some excellent videos on all of these topics. So make sure you subscribe and follow that so you get the updates that I put up constantly from now on. And the other one is walking. Walking is the world's best exercise. The research actually shows you don't live longer by going to the gym and building huge muscles and becoming a muscle bound person. It actually shows you live longer, you maintain your weight at the perfect weight or achieve your weight by simply walking. Walking, that's all you need to do. You don't need to do a marathon. You don't have to do an hour or two at the gym every day. That's great if you like it. I love going to the gym a couple of times a week. Love it. Love it, but I love walking even more. And for me, I walk um, an hour a day, sometimes more, sometimes a bit less. If I get an opportunity, a lot more. And I enjoy that walking. And the great thing about walking is it just shakes up all of the metabolic processes in your body. By the way, the first thing it shakes up is your gut. When you go for a walk, 
It sends messages to your gut to actually work to become healthier for the right bacteria to develop in there and to control the what are called the opportunistic ones to push them aside. And then that instantly starts sending messages back to you through all of these mechanisms I've talked at gut rules about the fact that you don't need to overeat, you don't need to eat. And it's a win-win-win situation. So walking is a brilliant exercise. It doesn't matter if you do it in five minute bursts and 55 minute bursts, you just walk and you take the opportunity. And the opportunity arises every single day somewhere. Just take those extra few minutes. And when you're out there, breathe, de-stress, and think about all of the things I've said here. These are based on science. It's not hype, it's not media. I'm not trying to sell you a product. I'm actually just trying to educate you on what shows up in the science. Add to that a couple of extra glasses of water and other things you can do. I'll post up a lot more of that on, on my uh, other videos that are, that are coming out. So when you subscribe, you'll get those. And the final aspect of all this, and I haven't even included it as one of the seven habits, is set your goals. All of the research that we did, my research group, I did at university. Remember, okay, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a researcher, PhD researcher, academic, ex-associate professor. All of the research we did on healthy eating, healthy lifestyle, environment, all those things, we found that the people who succeed are the ones who set their goals. So I'll put up another one, an another video on how to set your goals to succeed because we actually did the research. And we found that the people who set their goals were about 70, 80% more likely to achieve what they wanted than the people who just sit back and this is what I want. So be precise, set your goals, the seven secrets, and follow us and share this information so we can get it out there instead of all that hype that's actually making people sick and put on weight.